Hi everyone! Welcome to this week's tutorial. My name is Alyssa with Amateur Arts and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a necklace out of an avocado stone. So I'm going to be drying out an avocado seed and then I'm going to be sculpting it. So I hope you enjoy the video this week. I usually put out videos either every Tuesday or Wednesday of the week, so um, look forward to next week's video. You can like our page on Facebook and to see more of these, we also have a YouTube page too that's fairly new. So you can find us on there at um, Amateur County Arts Council. So I hope you enjoy and uh, thanks for watching. Okay, so the first thing I wanna mention before starting this video is that with the tools I'm going to be working with today and um, how hard it's going to be to sculpt one of these. Um, it's not going to be very easy to sculpt them. They get very stiff. Like, like I say, avocado stone. There's a reason why it's called avocado stone because it is very hard. So this isn't really something that I recommend children to do. I definitely, I would say this is an adult project. You can very easily um, get hurt by your X-Acto knife. It's not something that I think that children should try because you really need to be able to have full control over what you're doing. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to put that warning out there before I start. And so now I'm going to go over what I'm going to be working with today. So I've got all sorts of tools over here. Um, the last time I did this, I used my X-Acto knife and excuse all the rust on my X-Acto knife. But um, I also have all these polymer clay tools that I use and um, they could also help me. So I'm going to see if maybe I can use some of these today as well. Um, I think it might have some good results if I try some of those. And then I'm going to need a peeler and that's really about it. Um, I'm going to string it on a necklace and so I'll get the necklace out later. But uh, yeah, other than that, what you're going to be doing is once you have taken your avocado, eaten your avocado, <laughs> and taken the seed out of your avocado, you're going to leave it to dry and it's going to become like this. So you leave it for probably just a few hours. This one's been left a little longer. That's why it's a lot easier to pull this up. You don't want to leave it too long though. But um, when you're cutting the avocado too, if, you're, if you are if you have the atten intention of using the avocado stone, you want to be careful cutting it because if you're cutting with your knife to open your avocado, um, it's going to leave a mark anywhere that it hits on this. And it could actually dig a little deep. Like you'll probably see once I start peeling this, which I'm going to start peeling it away. Um, there may be some spots on it. I try to be as careful as I can, um, but not all the time am I the one who's cutting the avocado. So sometimes it may not be, um, it may be visible, that line. So I'm gonna see, I'm just gonna start cutting it away at this. And sometimes I actually will use this too. I might try that now. It kind of helps me grab this easy. And you just want to peel all this off of there. See right here, you can tell that's where the avocado was cut. And so sometimes it's not much of an issue, but um, other times you may see it on there and you'll that means you're going to have to dig deeper to get rid of that. And therefore you're going to have less to work with. So you can see there's another layer of skin inside of this. So once I get rid of all this on the outside, I'm gonna be also removing that layer of skin here too. You can kind of tell it's a different, it looks different.
Okay, so I got rid of it all. So you can see a bit of imperfections on there, but I'm going to be taking this layer away and hopefully most of that will disappear. Um, I'll probably end up having to cut a little further into there. But uh, so far this is what it looks like. And so this layer is going to go away. And so I'm going to start with this and I'm going to try to keep as much on there as I can though. I don't want to remove too much skin because this is going to shrink down some more. Because what I'm going to be doing after this point is you're going to want to let it sit for about a week to turn into what they call an avocado stone when it totally hardens. See, so you can see that part pretty much came off, so it wasn't that deep, so that's good. If you leave this layer of skin on, um, it's going to end up causing it to shrink down further than you want it to, so you want to remove this before you sit it for a week. And some people use a knife for this part. Um, I really like to use this because I feel like I have more power, more control over what I'm doing. That way I don't end up taking larger chunks off than I want to. I can kind of just graze the skin. And you want to make sure that you get a pretty healthy looking seed. If you have a seed that comes out of your avocado that really doesn't look all that great, you don't really want to use that. I will show you an example of one that I've tried to make an avocado stone out of um, that wasn't really a great looking seed to begin with. And sometimes seeds actually look great and then after you set them for a week, they're not anymore. <laughs> so I'll show you an example of what not to use. Uh, basically, if you have a seed that's bad, it's just going to fall apart when you try to use it. Instead of turning kind of like a stone, it almost it almost looks kind of porous. And um, it kind of reminds me more of like a wood. And when you start to carve into it, it just flakes away. So you want to make sure you have a good, healthy looking one like this. And so you can kind of tell the difference. Um, you want to look for the shiny areas here. Make sure you get rid of them all. Okay, so it looks good right now. So, or actually, let me get this little spot. There we go. All right, so the next step, you're going to want to separate this because there's a seam down it. Um, it's kind of hard to see. I can kind of see it. I think it's going right here. And then it's going down this way. So the seam isn't always like straight down. Sometimes it kind of goes like this, and then it goes over like this one looks like it does. So you're going to get one side that's going to be bigger than the other side. But uh, you want to cut this because then if you try to sculpt out of this and it has that seam down it, then once everything dries up, you're going to create a weak point. And so you want to make sure that you separate these. So what I do is find where the separation is and you can kind of push it. I'm pretty sure I see it. I want to make sure before I mess with it here. Yep, that's it. So 
So I'm just going to kind of get in there and start to open it up and then it'll pop itself open. All right, so here we go. So it actually turned out pretty even there. There's still one side that looks a little bit bigger, but not bad. So now when you look inside, you can see it's glossy. So that's a layer the same as this. You want to get rid of that as well. So I usually try to do this as even as I can because I like these to dry with a really nice flat face. So I try to kind of go under here and uh, try to do this as flat as I can. It's okay if it doesn't turn out totally flat because um, depending on what you're going to be sculpting, you're probably going to be uh, using sandpaper on this. Okay, so that one's all done. And so when it gets to this point, what you're gonna do is just, I usually just put them in a little plate and I'll leave them somewhere that doesn't really get direct sunlight, but somewhere where they can just dry out. And uh, I wouldn't really put them in direct sunlight because they will shrivel up way too fast and it's probably not going to um, create a really good avocado stone if you do that. So just kind of let them dry on their own. Don't try to um, quicken the process. Let them take that full week. Okay, so this one's all done too. So what I do is just set these down in a plate and then I'll just leave them somewhere to dry for that week. All right, so once you let these dry for about a week, this is what they're gonna look like. So they're gonna turn really hard and into what they call the avocado stone. So looking at the back, it's going to get little areas that um, are kind of molded looking on there you're going to be taking those off so it's okay if you see some of these and they have some mold uh, behind them i don't know if i have any that are a really good example of that i don't really have any with that much mold on them but uh yeah and here is an example though if you used an avocado seed that just wasn't really a very great one um, this is what it's going to do it's just going to shrivel up and become not really usable so you can see the difference between those. Even the texture looks totally different. So if the seed doesn't really look good, uh, don't even bother. Because this is what it's going to do. And uh, if it has any areas that look like they're already decaying, it's just going to fall off when it gets to this part of the process. So you want to have two that are really nice and healthy like these. So the next thing to do is take some sandpaper. And so I've got two different ones. I've got a finer grain. And then I've got a more abrasive one right here. And so I'll start with this one. 
and I'm just going to start sanding it down. And I usually like to have a pretty flat surface on this side. And then I'm going to try to round this out and get rid of all these little nicks in there that are created when I'm, um, when I'm skinning it. So I'm going to make them very nice and uh, smooth. So you can start on either side, but you'll just take it like this. And I've got multiple pieces of sandpaper because the longer you do this, it's just, you know, it's going to get all in that grain. So you may need several pieces. And so you'll see that it'll start to sand this down. So usually I just keep going till I pretty much get rid of that entire inside part that is kind of caved in. And so it's almost there. And then I started doing the back side as well. And so I've almost got a lot of those spots out of it. So you could even leave some of this if you want to. Some people like it because it adds texture to it. Or you can go with a really nice smooth look like what I've got going on right here. So I'm just going to continue with this. So now that I've got it sanded down quite a bit, and I've pretty much gotten rid of this as far as I really want to go, I don't really want to go any further because that's going to take out a lot. Because this gets really deep right there, it's going to take out too much from this side to sand that down any further. And I'm going to be carving on this side. So you can carve on either side. I have one that I did where I carved on this side and I did a flower. So it looked like um, this was a frame around it and then there was like a flower inside of it. So you can really carve on either side. But I'm going to start carving on this side.
So when I began sculpting this, I had the idea of making it into a human face. So you can see right here that I was trying to create a nostril there, but I ended up ultimately deciding that I wanted to make this into an owl instead because I started seeing the owl shape at about this point. So I just ended up taking that nostril off and instead going with a beak.
So at this point I realized that the nose was a little too long for my liking, so I shortened it up. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of highlights and shadows in certain areas. So what I'm doing is using acrylic paint to mimic staining. And so what I use is Master's Touch acrylic paint and the color is Burnt Umber. And I like to use this color just to create that effect to where it looks like I'm using stain but actually I'm just using acrylic paint. And I add a little bit of water to dilute it. That way it easily goes into little crevices.
So at this point, I'm going to be putting the eye hook into the top so that I can string this on a necklace. So what I'm going to be doing is drilling into the top until I get a good hole where I can start putting the eye pin in, and then I can just screw that in. The next step after this is going to be sealing that acrylic paint in, and I'm going to be using Verithane to do this. Alright, so now that I got the eye hook in, the next thing I'm going to be doing is using the Verithane. So I have polyurethane water-based, and it's a crystal clear gloss, so it's going to have a glossy effect to it. Um, you can also get ones that don't have gloss that are matte if you don't really want something to have that much of a shine to it. So I'm just going to start, and I've already mixed up my polyurethane, so I'm just going to start applying it. And it's pretty warm out here, so it should dry pretty fast between coats. And it's going to make it a lot darker colored. And you want to make sure that your coats aren't that thick. So try to really spread it out as much as you can. It's going to go on looking a little blue, but it'll dry clear. So any areas that you see build up of more of a whitish blue color, you want to make sure that you spread it out evenly. And I recommend always using this outside because it's not good to be breathing this in in a small enclosed place. Alright, so I'm just going to let the sun hit this, and it should dry fairly quickly. That way I can get the spot that's underneath my finger. You'll see it kind of turns it to where it looks like wood. It's got a really nice wood look to it when you add this on there. And I usually like to add three coats on everything that I do. It's already pretty much dry here. It's not tacky anymore. You can see when my eye hook went in, the reason why I didn't put it in all the way is because it started to go a little sideways and that created a weak point right here. So instead of continuing with it, what I just did is stop it right there. And then I'm going to put the Verithane over and that's going to help kind of keep this little weaker point from breaking. So it basically kind of goes on like you've got a layer um, a really tough layer over it, almost looks like a layer of glass when you put enough coats on it. 
and so that'll keep that weak point um, it'll strengthen that weak point back up So now I've got one full coat over the whole thing, and so I'm going to let that back dry for a little bit, and then I'll start on the second coat. And you'll see as I add more coats, it'll start looking more and more glossy. You can also use stain as well. Um, I don't really use stain just because I'm not a big fan of the smell of stain. But uh, instead of like, I use the acrylic paints to kind of create that effect like there was stain in these little crevices. But uh, you can actually just use stain too.
Now I'm taking a ring and I'm bending it open so that I can put it onto the eye hook and then I'm going to bend it back closed. And then that way I can string this on my necklace. And here's the completed owl. Alright, so that's it for this week's tutorial. I thank you for joining me and if you have any suggestions for something that I can do next week, you're always welcome to leave those in the comments either on Facebook or on YouTube and I'll see them and hopefully it's something that I can do. I'll see you next week. Bye!